right, we got him on the phone, and I'm looking forward to this. Jacob Morrison. Now, we're doing this through WhatsApp, and so just bear with me here as we get all our connections in place. Hello, Jacob. Can you hear us? Hey, Martin. Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, nice to talk to you, mate. And very nice to meet you, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually got a message from Dad uh, a while. He's He said you messaged him and spoke about this interview, so... Yeah, brilliant. Oh, great. Yeah, look, I, I messaged him earlier, and I said, hey, we've got, we got the lad on. Really looking forward to it. Your dad's a good dude, mate. Really good dude. Yeah, yeah, he said the same. He spoke highly of you as well. Oh, good. Oh, how long? So, okay, give us everything about you. How old are you, pal? Uh, I just turned twenty three, actually. Um, the other on the nineteenth, so I've got the exact same birthday as Marty Banks down here. I'm um, just brilliant. ten years later, so oh, I brilliant. turned twenty three. Yeah. Okay, tell us about your career. Where'd, where'd, where'd you go to school? Where'd you start playing code? Um, yep. So I grew up on the Sunshine Coast. Um, after moving from Auckland uh, with my family, I grew up. Uh, there from 2008 onwards. Um, I was on the Sunshine Coast for a lot of my footy uh, growing up. Obviously, over in Australia, league's pretty massive over there. So, um, yeah, so we just in, we were on the Sunshine Coast for a while, and then I um, I really fell in love with Union and whatnot. Um, and then I ended up getting into a little bit of trouble up on the Sunshine Coast, and I was lucky to get a second chance. And um, I was offered to go down and play some rugby at Brisbane Grammar School for my last two years of footy. So, um, yeah, I'm really grateful for that. Ronnie Cochran, um, who was uh, heavily affiliated there with Brisbane Grammar, he got me down there. And um, I, that's where I met Paul Warwick, who um, played a bit for Munster. He was a big name over in Munster. And yep. he just he took me under his wing kind of thing. And I just, yeah, I mean, I really fell in love with the game there at Brisbane Grammar. And obviously in Australia, the GPS competition, the schoolboy competition there is pretty massive. Um, and then I managed to, I moved from there, after my first year of school, I went to um, a University of Queensland, a rugby club. Yep. Uh, just my first year out of school. And then, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it there. I mean, I, I learned lots. I was behind Tate McDermott and whatnot, and just learning from them was awesome. And then I met probably one of the most influential men in my life, um, Todd Dammers. Um, he was the head co- he was the head coach of uh, South Premier Grade, uh, just an opposing club in that Brisbane competition, that Queensland competition. Um, and then, yeah, Toddy really took me under his wing there. And I just, I went from a pretty average player, I think, to I, my game just improved a lot there. So I thank him a lot there. And Chris Latham um, was a yeah, backs coach yep. there a lot at South. Yep. Uh, he was with the Reds and the Wallabies. So, yeah, Latho, I mean, I still talk to Toddy and Lath like every day while I'm over here. Go on. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And then I got I met with Dale, the head coach here at Southland, um, when we trained and stuff against Tonga. Um, he seemed to like what he saw there and then just asked if I'd be interested in uh, moving down to Southland for a few months and playing a bit of MPC rugby. So, yeah, I, obviously I would l- I loved that opportunity and took it. So I'm down here in Invercargill now. Okay, look, there's so many things to true. It's all from what you just said there. Um, I love the yeah. fact that you're mentioning those names of people that, that really mean something to you and you're still in contact with them. This is It's just music yeah. to the ears of every single parent, mate. And, I, look, and you know, yeah. I always... I always, when I talk to any young person, think, okay, um, you know, go back to the parents and, and, and how well raised they are. Obviously, you've been taught some really good manners, some courtesy, and a lot of respect as well. Can I just touch base on, you don't have to tell us, when you say you got into a bit of trouble, was that just a, a young mm. man kind of thing or just doing a dumb thing? What, can you can you tell us about yeah, that? You don't have yeah, to, Yeah, look, um, no, I, yeah, I, I won't go into too much detail. It was up on the Sunshine Coast, but... Um, no, I had, a lot of, I had a lot of teachers probably against me at the school I was at up there, and they just... I think a lot of them really did think I'd fail and end up in a lot more trouble than I was getting into. But I was, yeah, I was making some dumb decisions up sure. there with a few sure. boys. Yeah. Um, and then, mate, I'm I'm actually really proud of how I've ended up there, and I've kind of like stuck it to them and said, yeah, like you got it all wrong with me. So I'm I'm really happy and proud of myself, and obviously my support network around, like my mum and dad, uh, they've been massive the whole the whole journey. Yeah. So when you, you know, and all the other parents are listening at the moment, okay, because, you know, one of the things mm. that as parents, you know, when we have teenage boys, I mean, you know, the things that I always fear, mate, was the drink driving was one of them, you know, this, the suicide stats yeah. are absolutely appalling, you fear that. All you want is you just want them to make some good decisions and right decisions, and also the peer pressure thing, you know, all of that kind of stuff. But you sound as though you've actually worked your way through that by yourself as well. You've made, you've made really good calls. 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, when I was young and dumb um, on the Sunshine Coast there, I was, I was making some bad decisions. But, I mean, uh, a lot of people actually had turned their back on me. But, obviously, rugby never never really did turn its back on me. And I just kept that was the one passion and really love I had up there. So, I mean, when I got that opportunity to play down in Brisbane and in the GPS comp, I just I took it with both hands. It was, just, it was almost a second chance for me. And I just... I had, I had some pretty big conversations with mum and dad about where I was headed and what I was doing. And yeah, I mean, I, I'm really happy and proud that I have such great parents that helped me through that. Yeah, look, and you know, and, and as you're growing up, I don't know kind of what the age was when Dan retired, your old man retired and that. Did you know much about him? Look, because I can tell you a couple of things about him, okay? This is just from an outside perspective. 160 test wickets for New Zealand. When when he took over being our, our lead bowler in test cricket, you've got to remember Sir Richard Hadley had just retired, one of the greatest ever mm. to pick up a cricket ball. And so your father had to stand in that shadow. And look, and, and he'll, mm. he'll, he'll even admit to, to you as well that, you know, was he blessed with all the talent in the world? I'll tell you what he was blessed with, mate. He was blessed with courage and a massive heart and a will. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I think he'll tell you himself he should have picked up a few more than 160 yep. wickets. Yep. I think I've seen a lot of highlights, a few drop catches. But, no, nah, he, yeah, Dad, Dad's been amazing for me, just, like, not buying into anything, like what the media says and stuff, and just... Yeah, I mean, just backing yourself. He was He's only five foot. I think he's listed at 5'10", five, 5'11". Five, but Yeah, give him that, not. mate. Cut him some slack, mate. Okay, go 5'11". Yeah, give him some 5'11". No, he... Yeah, he just... Everyone had written him off and didn't think he was up to the standard. And, I mean, I've, I've got the utmost respect for my dad, just the way he was able to play and, like, forge a, mad, a massive career. So, yeah, I, I think he was great for me. Look, just going really ahead. successful and probably even more successful... Afterwards, when he first started getting into the commentary and that, um, what Danny mm. did is he went to places, he went to Sri Lanka, he went to Bangladesh, he went to India and Pakistan, he went to places that nobody mm. else would go and he's, and he started his commentary career and he's now in hot demand, he goes all over the world. And how's, and how's, yeah. and how's mum, mate? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, dad's, dad's great, obviously, yeah, he's travelling the world, living the dream in the Caribbean at the moment, yeah. but um, no, mum, mum's awesome too, I, she's been probably one of my biggest rocks in my life she she's got her own business and whatnot on the sunshine coast so she runs her own skincare and um it's 28 actually the business is called she runs that and she's also an author which is yeah mum mum's actually she works harder than anyone i've actually ever met in my life uh good old mum all right let's talk about south and then you got counties monaco they just lost to taranaki i watched that game they were pretty yeah. bloody good i don't have to tell you and the rest of the lads as well you played eight you haven't won yet neither has manawa two but you've come mm. real you've got really really close what does it take to get over the line oh i think now it's just a bit of belief i mean you look at you look at our games against some heavyweights like auckland um otago and whatnot we we're within seven points and all that i mean auckland we lost by one point um like we're we're in the fight. Uh, it's just it's tough to see. Like the scores actually don't reflect the games. Um, like Waikato was was tough to watch because we were actually in that game. It was fourteen all at half time, and then bloody Damian McKenzie comes on and yes. puts on a clinic and just <laughs> yeah. runs circles around us. I mean, what, what can you do? What can you do, bro? Yeah, I know. What yeah. can you do? You've, as I say, you're playing the county's Monaco side. That's just one above you in the yeah. odds conference. Also playing in, in front of a, a Southland crowd and being down there. It's a different part of New Zealand down there, mate. You know that now. No, it is. I, I didn't think it actually existed until I um <laughs> until Dale said that <laughs> it was there. It's, uh, Southland was down here, so... Nah, in the car, it's it's actually it's we've had some of the best weather in the country. Stop apparently. it, like, mate! Right now, Stop it! You live on the Sunshine Bay. Coast. Stop it, mate! Don't even start that stuff. No one's no, believing. No, you. I'm not even kidding. No, it's beautiful down here, but um, no, the people and the, the town's awesome. I mean, it's a tiny population. It's only fifty thousand compared to being in Brisbane and whatnot. So, it's a big big change, but. Oh, all the boys down here, I'm sure, like every other team, but all the boys down here are really good and have taken me in. Jacob Morrison is with us, a son of the very famous New Zealand cricketer, Danny Morrison. All right, your halfback, mate. Who do you model your game on? Oh, gosh. This will sound pretty cliched, but I, I love watching TJ Perinara and those kind of uh, bigger halfbacks. Um, obviously, down here, we've got Jimmy Cow. Yeah, who, um, legend, mate. Mm. Jimmy Cow. Yeah, he's an absolute legend, and I think we've similar kind of games i guess like obviously growing up um like watching a lot of we watched a lot of league and whatnot up home so 
I mean, yeah, I model my game mainly off TJ Perrin. I try to, obviously. Well, it's a good person to model it off, mate. He, look, he, the, yeah. the the original one of him, I thought, was Justin Marshall when Marshy came in in 1996 mm. into the team. A bigger halfback yeah. who almost plays that loose forward role and actually sort of yeah. adds, yeah, okay, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I feel I'm, I'm a bit of a bigger halfback too. I weighed in at 88 kilos today. Not bad. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel, yeah, I, I do feel like I'm a little bit more solid than a lot of the other little halfbacks, but. Yeah, I, I try. I try be that defensive side as well a lot oh, more. Yeah, try yeah slot into the line. And what's your ambitions for your career? Where where where, where do you go after the NPC finishes? Um, yeah, so I've been talking to my manager. I, I haven't had like the most productive or best season I was wanting to down here. With I've had a few head knocks and um, yeah, just some niggly kind of injuries and whatnot. Just trying to get back into it. But man, I've learnt heaps down here. Hey, like. I've really, I've really learnt lots from even Jay Renton and um, Jarvis Wallace, the other nines down here. I've just learnt so much from their games, and just I'll definitely take that with me. But uh, my manager, just in talk, he's pretty, um, he's pretty in bed with uh, Racing Ninety Two over in France. So looking at some options like some injury covers or whatnot. Um, and then ov- obviously, if that doesn't work out, I'll probably head down to Sydney and play a bit of shoot shield just to keep okay. keeping a system and playing. Or I mean, there's other options going over to the states with the MLR just to stay in a professional environment. Yeah, of course. Yeah, and also if the international phone rang, I mean, if Australia said to you, "Hey, you know, we're looking at your power," what would you do? You're born there. Uh, yeah. No, I'm ac- I'm actually born in Auckland. All oh, right, uh, Marty. I was born born in Auckland and raised there till I was eight, but. I mean, I've I spent so much time over on the Aussie side. I feel like, yeah, I feel like I'd, I'd I'd pick the green and gold. But if New Zealand called, you'd obviously play for the black. Look, all the very best. Thank you so much for joining us. I've been so looking forward to uh, to meeting you. And even though it's only over the phone, mate, I can feel you and hear your father. And yeah, and as I say, you know, yeah. well done, mum and dad. They've raised you well. All the very best for your career. I hope that health wise you're good. And you know, looking forward yeah. to watching you play against Counties Monaco, mate. Thanks, mate. I really appreciate it. Thanks for the call. Yes, sweet as. That is Jacob Morrison. People that you've been listening to there. First time that he's ever been on the program.